So we are now envisioning the future task board. And not surprisingly, it starts with requirements from task number one. All the requirements you found out, based on what I just told you in the previous chapter, right? We are now in the next chapter. And um, so, so I imagine somewhere tomorrow you start really doing this after you print. And, and this is, again, negotiate with the client, because now you have decided these are the requirements I'm going to start with. And now you have to find out with your client, you tell the client, in my task model, I will focus on this and I will focus on that. And, and the client might say, well, actually, I would like it a little bit different, and you have to negotiate. You have to give arguments to the client. So you have to, to, to convince the client that this is what you are going to design and that this is something that you don't think makes sense or is not helpful. Um, and you have to consider technical and legal issues. Uh, techniques and legal issues, completely different things, but in a way they behave the same. Techniques tell you what is possible in, in the way of information technology and in the way of space and in the way of weight and physical aspects of the design. Like, like if you, you, your television would be at least 40 kilos heavier because of the thing, then we shouldn't do it. Or if your car would have to be rebuilt in order, this is the technical stuff. And then there's legal issues, things that you are not allowed to do or things that you expect will not be allowed as soon as uh, the government finds out about it. So that, uh, this is definitely to do with things like privacy and ownership of information and data. Um, so look at opportunities, what could be possible if we redesign? And look at restrictions, what will not be possible because we design it this way? And look at challenges, things that you say, I would like to make this possible, but it would need well, a technical development that's not there yet. Uh, or it would need a change in the law, which actually sometimes happens, right? So consider it. And, and, and expectations. What do you expect will be available next year or available five years from now, depending on, on the, the, the focus of your design? But in your case, maybe uh, you have to focus on next year or you have to focus on what will still be um, acceptable or fashionable or, or technically okay five years from now because I guess your, your client maybe wouldn't like to develop something that would be old-fashioned in three years maybe not maybe they do so consider this right so both on techniques and on legal issues consider well, what's possible what should not be possible what has to be uh, well, challenged what requires a change like sometimes technology requires a change I this would be fine if it would be not emitting so much heat. So, Philips, do some research, right? Or, or this would be possible if the law would change. <coughs> well, talk to your political parties, right, maybe. So, and, and consider what you expect will be available in a certain amount of time. Um, so, now I'm going to show you, to, to kind of sell you a, a technical design space analysis. This has not been dealt with yet, or has it? Okay, design space analysis um, is, is an approach that, that, that helps you to make choices. So the design space, from my point of view, means the space you have to make a decision. You are now going to design and you could do it in different ways. Now, all the different ways together is the design space. Uh, and, and if you find out what all are the possibilities, you, you know what choices you can make, right? So. And, and, and using the design space analysis, sorry, using the design space and analyzing it systematically leads to a design rationale. A reason you can give to your client to say, I choose this because, right? So the design rationale is, is a reason why in the design space you make a certain decision. And, and I'm now going to, to tell you that we will talk about three things. Questions, so there are questions you want to solve. Options, possibilities, and criteria. Why is a certain option good or not good? So design space analysis in literature, sometimes you just type in QOC. And if you type in QOC in Google, then you will find that lots of literature and examples about design space analysis. It's kind of a, a keyword now, questions, options, criteria. And, and there are a couple of things that you should understand from the start. Who is posing the questions? Because questions that you try to solve could be from different backgrounds. Sometimes the client explicitly asks you a question. I'm interested to find out 
whether it should be in color or black and white. I would like to find out whether the information should stay in my own um, store or whether the information should stay in the store of the, club, the customer, right? So, so, who owes the question? And sometimes it's a question of the user. The user would say, could it be more simple or, or how simple could it be? And, and maybe the client says, well, users will understand if they really need. And, and, but, so, and sometimes it's, it's one of the designers. And this could be the technical designer who is actually concerned about electronics or about the physical shape. And sometimes it's the psychologist of the team who says, I would like to know how people could understand, right? So who posed the question? Always be aware this is a relevant question. And the question is relevant because this person, this stakeholder, this agent, this expert asked for it. And, and, and then in order to answer the questions, so in order to bring up the options and the criteria and compare and come to a decision, you need a lot of different disciplines. And, and in order to involve the disciplines, I'm proposing you a technique that I call guided brainstorming. Now, guided brainstorming is not brainstorming at all. It's a, a procedure. And there are different ways to do the procedure, but I say guided because just sitting around the table and shouting doesn't work in this case, because some people shout louder than other people. Some people are from different cultures, they speak up or they wait till they get a turn. So, so guided brainstorming, this, this is my label. So, questions, options, criteria. Well, because we are aiming at the rationale, a design rationale that we could communicate to the client, and if the client buys you a design, the client will communicate these design decisions to the engineers to build the thing. <coughs> you need a very clear and, 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 and unbiased representation. So a kind of a formal representation. So, so a representation between disciplines. So if the psychologists agree, the engineer should also understand. And if the design team understands, the client should understand. Uh, and, and even the users maybe should understand. You could say, this is the decision we made, and this is because. So you need to communicate and maybe Half a year from now, or after two weeks when the client comes back to you, you need to come back because the client says, I, this criterion is no longer valid because they changed the law or because Philips invented a new thing. And, and then you have to go back. So you have to backtrack your decisions. And you can only backtrack your decisions if the decisions are clear, if the rationale is still readable. Right? So I'm advocating a formal representation to make your design decisions. Right? Okay, sources. Well, task model one, requirements, the client's initial intentions, what, what the client told you Monday night, and the task policy inconsistencies that you found. So maybe the, the seller of the television set say, it's easy, just do it, and the, cost, and, and the people at home say, I cannot find it, it's not possible, right? So inconsistency, problems, conflicting goals. Like people want to change the television set, but at the same time they use the television for leisure. So they won't solve big problems. They are not there for big problems, they are to have a nice evening. So conflicting goals. And, and user needs, but because somebody have to get, gets a headache from the television. So there's a need for adjusting to uh, whatever lightning or. So these type of things, all the things you collected more or less so far now lead to questions for task model 2 and for the detail specifications later on. Could even be the shape of the button or the size of the button or the readability of the menu. But, but you could say this is detailed, but anyhow it leads for questions about the redesign. <coughs> A big red Q, right? Q O C. I'm specifying the Q here. Right? I'm trying to get very precise here. So the second was this. Oh, 